that there is no one in your life so unlovable that you cannot, that you should not, by God's grace and through his spirit, try to move towards loving them. Because it's not just what Jesus called us to do, it's what he modeled. So what does that look like? How do we move towards applying this? On your way in, you should have gotten a note card, and I want to invite you to take that out. And if you didn't get a note card, it's okay, grab a piece of paper, something you can get your hands on, but... This is what I want to invite you to do as one way to move towards this. I want to invite you to write the name of an enemy on that card. And it's better if it's an individual, not a group. Um, I wouldn't advise writing the name of the person next to you. Do that at, at your own risk. But I want you to write the name of a person, And if you don't have hostility towards anyone, again, that's great. Who has hostility towards you? In other words, whose card are you on? And what I want to invite you to do is to take that card and put it somewhere where you're going to see it. And every day this week, pray for that person, for God to bless them, not for God to judge them. Pray for God to bless them. And, and all of us who are doing this, you you don't feel anything warm and fuzzy towards that person. I know that. Do it anyway. <laughs> because Jesus said to do it. And because as we do this, what happens is love grows inside of us. You see, praying for our enemies is not just an expression of love for them. It's a means by which love grows inside of us. I love what John, John Stott says. He says, it's impossible to pray for people without loving them. And it's impossible to go on praying for them without discovering that our love for them grows and matures. So let me invite you every day this week, take out the card, it could be short, but God, I pray you would bless, truly bless this person. What would it look like for you to do that this week as you try to follow Jesus with this part of your life? You know, when the genocide happened in 19... 94, a man named John Rukyahana survived, but the majority of his family members did not. But he was a Christian and a pastor, and his faith compelled him to go into Rwanda and to help rebuild society. And so he helped build schools and, and churches. But one of the most powerful things that Rukyahana ever did was he, he created an organization that provided opportunities for victims and perpetrators to meet together. Think about that for a moment. For victims and perpetrators to meet together, to admit their crimes, to ask for forgiveness, and to take steps towards restoration and healing. Truly remarkable. And in 2009, he was given the William Wilberforce Award, which is given every year to a distinguished Christian leader who confronts societal injustice and helps move people towards peace and reconciliation. But this is what he shared at his ceremony, and this is where I want to leave us today. Through all that he'd been through, when he reflected back on what gave him the strength to love his enemies, because that's what he did, this is what he said. He said, we must forgive like Jesus did while he was on the cross. And then he says, without God, I would hate such killers with all of my heart. But with God, I can truly say that I love them. Men and women, without God, most of us have no reason to love some of the people that are on your cards right now. But with God, we can say truly, the power of the Holy Spirit, we can say that we love them. May it be so.